Hello, and welcome to another episode of Big Nasty's DIY. Now, I've studied under some of the greatest composers of all time. Bach, Beethoven, Engelbert, Humperdinck, and every one of them had the same problem. So let me demonstrate. I call this random samples. They all had the same problem that I'm having. It's not the player. It's the piano. You see, that sounded like shit. But it's like our political climate right now. We might have batshit crazy in the White House, but it's the House and the Senate that controls everything. As of today, and this, I'm probably one of the greatest of all times. But it's the keys that are failing me today. And I'm gonna show you how to fix that. This beautiful piece of art, this piano, is gonna be tuned but not only that, I'm going to show you how it fixes me. Well, this is a piano that we got. Neither one of us really play the piano, but it uh, is a player that uses a cassette recorder. And I'm going to convert it into a digital player so that you can take um, files from your cell phone, iPad or computer, play it over Bluetooth and then the piano will play for you. So let's kind of get started and show you what needs what has to happen to do this. So this is the underside of the piano. Uh, I'll go over each component here in a minute. Those, each one of those, are little servos that go to each key. So if I, if, if it electronically hits a key, it plays the piano, so it basically lifts it up and does the key that the uh, piano reads from the tape player. So I don't know if you've ever seen like an upright player piano with the paper. They have holes in them and sometimes they're done by either air or little sensors. And it basically tells the piano which key to play. This is basically the same thing, uh, except each one of those holes in the paper are uh, little magnetic dots on the cassette tape. Well now, once you do this, convert it over to electronic, it, uh, or digital actually, it, those um, little magnetic dots are sent via a MIDI file which is on your cell phone. So basically how this works, let me get this camera right. That's your power supply. You can see those huge capacitors. Here's your power in right here or this right here. That's this black cable that goes out uh, to a power switch that's in that black box. The main power is this black cable here, 
where's it at? Right here. And it goes over and comes in to the main power, which sits under here. That side of that transformer. And that's where main power comes in. This is your called your playback board. This receives the signal right here. I'll be installing that connector to the uh, digital device that will go into that black box. And that will send the signal to activate all the servos to play the piano. So when I come back, we'll wire up the actual Bluetooth device and the actual um, electronic device that interprets the signal and sends it to the servo or servos. One last note, if you noticed, there's no pedals. So there's a black cover that goes over this because this uses really high voltage to uh, run these servos. And you can tell by those capacitors up there. I mean, that thing's like that big around. Um, but the pedals are taken out. They're gone. They're sitting over there. And uh, we'll put them back in once we get everything together. I got to cut a notch in the black tray that covers all this because it was actually a blocking one of the pedals, keeping the pedal from working. Okay, so here is our kit. It is called the Piano Quarter Audio Interface Kit. Comes with a Logitech Bluetooth module if you order the um, wireless version, which is what I got. So let me get on the piano. Let me set this up. Okay, this is the cassette tape that's used to tape play the play uh, the tapes. Old, I think it's I think the I think the piano was made in 1980, so that's about right. You put a cassette tape in, and then this this sends the signal to the piano to that uh, playback board. And uh, so we're going to be replacing the cassette tape with a digital version. All right, so here we are under the piano. And... I made a little mistake earlier when I called these servos, they're not servos, they are solenoids. Servos move things back and forth while solenoids use an electromagnetic field to lift these plungers and hit the piano. So, this kit that we have. Let me move this stuff out of the way. And kind of move this light down. So this kit is very simple to install. Where the old kit unplugged from this connector right here. That's where the new kit goes in. What we're going to do is we're going to feed the cable from here, follow this power through here, because the little rack that had the cassette date, cassette uh, player, is what this module is going to sit on. So let me go ahead and run that. So there's our module cable. I'm going to have to uh, I'm pull that out. I'm going to run that behind this along with the power so that it, none of these other cables get in the way. Here we go. And we'll put it up in here and uh, I already have some cable holders and there's a running through there let me clean it all up and then uh, I'll be back <clears throat> I 
All right. Okay, so we have everything hooked up. There's our connector. This is going to be for an external speaker. Here's all our wiring. Hang through, nice and cleaned up. And then we gotta go back here. Here is where the tape player used to be. Now has, that's the module that now replaces the tape player and that's a Bluetooth receiver. Um, which allows me to send the, send the data from my phone or from a computer. I don't have to hook directly into the module. So now I gotta clean it all up, put everything um, back away. I did have this cover that um, was actually obstructing the pedals. So I'd cut that notch out a little deeper so the pedals would be out of the way. So let me go ahead and get this cleaned up. We'll show you what it looks like when it's all back together. So as you can see, we got everything hooked back up. That notch gives us plenty of room for the uh, pedals. I have to adjust this one pedal a little bit. These pedals, they should actually go about a quarter inch before they activate whatever they do. This first pedal lifts up the whole dampening rod. Second pedal dampens the last core. I don't remember what the last pedal does. I'll have to look that one up. But, uh, but everything seems to be now clear. And um, now we'll have to do a test and see how this works and then tune it. Okay, so we don't have it tuned yet, but we have the piano quarter turned on. See the red light means it's on and it's idle. It's not listening and it's not picking up any signal yet. Blue light is the Bluetooth. How about some Born Free? push it in just a little bit about a quarter inch and then it lifts the dampeners you can see the dampers going up so that way that works like that and when you stop but if you hold the damper up it should keep going the second one second pedal I thought that's supposed to yeah so the second pedal leaves whatever notes pressed so if I do these three they stay up and then so that will stay going while the others are playing third pedal I'm still I'm still working on not sure now comes the fun part, fun part of tuning. So one thing I wanted to show you is what happens 
when you're missing a string. So you can see we have three, three, two, and two. We're missing a string that goes from this guy and this guy. Well, actually, from this guy and this guy. So there should be a string that goes up through here, through here, around this post, comes back, and then wraps on this one. You can see the string that's on there, but it's broke. No string left here. So I've got to replace that. To do that, <clears throat> we, need to find out, we need to find out what size string do we need. So we can use a caliper to measure what string we have on each side. This one says 0.36. Um, let's see. Try this one. Let me try this one here. You gotta make sure you get it all the way on tight and then lift it straight up. Point three three on that side. And let's do, I just did that one, let's do this one. This is on the other side, point three. Make sure it's level, straight up. Point three, 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 four, I think I moved it. So I need to get a string that's point three, three. It usually comes in like 10 foot lengths and replace that one piano wire. Now tuning, what I do is I have this piece of paper that gives me all the frequencies for each key. So the last one I did was the 14th key. So let's see, the 15th key, if I count, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 15. So you see there's two strings. Here there's one string per note, two strings per note, three strings per note. These are the tenor, these are the bass, those single strings, and these larger strings. I think that's what it's called. I'm not a big piano guy. But anyhow, these two strings, these two here, are the ones that I need to Tune. And according to this, 15 is 61.7354 is the frequency. So what I do is I take one of these. This is a tam tam um, what do you call it? A tamper. Is you have to null out the strings before and after. So I get rid of this, I stick this between those two. Then I stick this like that. So that nulls those two, nulls those two, so that works, that works. So now, this one's, that one's dull. And the second string here is nulled out. That one and that one. So I'm gonna work on just this one middle, which goes up and is on that pin. Use 
this, they call it a hammer, but in any other human, it's a wrench. So I put this on here. And that's four. Make sure that should be the right one, which it is. And then I have a, a little app that I'll show you here on how to tune it. Okay. So, tuning. I showed you that little piece of paper. We're going to be tuning the 14th key. Actually, 15th key. Sorry, 14th was the last one. So, if we hit, if we damper using these little rubber damper things if we dampen the first the string before and the string after we hit our key and we should be at 61.7 see that we're off so then we hit it turn our wrench Till we get right around 61.7. Okay. Then we move our dampers to the string before and after the next one. And we hit the same key. See, it's off. Oops. Got to move the hammer, so I kind of screwed that up. Gotta fix that one. Okay, move the hammer or wrench. Move to the next set of keys. Tighten that up. Then if we removed both dampers and hit the key for both strings, that's pretty much it. Now you just gotta go through and tune every string. Okay, so what we have here is a string, put this away. We have a string missing. If you see, if you can see the gap right here. So that goes from this toning po tuning post through this little end over here. I don't know what they call it. You have, you have little pins here that has to go, it has to zigzag through. Goes around this post and it zigzags back and then it comes back across under this through and to this post. So before we do anything, is we have to back this post and this post, we have to back them out three turns. So I'm going to kind of go at an angle and then we want the holes that are in the tuning post to be vertical um, parallel to the, uh, the other strings. So we're going to Un, uh, we want to loosen them three turns. So there's a half turn. And we're pretty tight. So there's one turn. Now I could probably do four of these. One, two, three, four. There's two turns. One, two, three, and four. And then I'm going to turn it until the hole is lined up with the strings. There we go. I got to do the same thing to this one. 
One, two, three, four, there's one turn, one, two, three, four, there's two turns, one, two, three, four, so that's three turns, now I want to turn and line up the hole, it's pretty much almost there, right there. Now here's my wire that I'm going to be using. I bought this, um, got it on Amazon. Uh, I've measured with a caliper here, which ended up being 33 hundredths of an inch. I just measured the wire before and after because it's usually the same size. Now be careful, this comes in 10 foot lengths. When you unravel it, it's going to just spring out on you. So you got to be careful. Sometimes if you get longer lengths, they come in a, like a metal container that keeps them in check. But you just got to be careful because when this thing unwinds, it's, it's going to want to go. But it's, this is only 10 feet. So as you can see, it's starting to want to unwind now. So I just let it go slowly. Pull on out. And there we go. And unspool the rest of it. There you go. So now it's completely unspun. So now, I'm going to line up my first post. Here. Now what I've been seeing, what I've been seeing is people put it right on the edge and then hold it. Oops. Keep it in there. And then use your crowbar. Bring this wire up. Okay, that's a whole turn. That's gonna tighten up once I get that through. Okay. 
then we need to run this wire back up and through. Okay, then we gotta run our wire. We'll nip it here. And then we gotta run it through here. Okay. So inch and a half, we need to pull it about here. Let's get this tightened up. Now, this wire, we need to make sure we keep prying it up. Okay. Then, it needs to come over. Okay. Okay, now this is the tricky part because you got to pull this back. And then start tightening this without the wire slipping off and then keeping it under the wire. And then making sure that it stays in its guides, which it is. We tighten it up just a little bit. And we have to line this up. And then 
line it up here. It's going just a little bit more. There we go. Perfect. Give this some more turns. Now, let's see where we're at on frequency. So, let me back out just a little bit. This key should be, let me see, is that it right there? This first key is no, that's not it. What is that? Thirty-three, thirty-six. Seventy-eight. 78 is 2349 Hertz. So it's off a little. So let's get this key first. That should be this guy here. So we'll kill that one. Kill that one. 2349 and we have to tune this one first which would be this guy no, no, this guy too much, way too much Round 2347, 2348, that's pretty, that's good enough. Now comes our keys, not this first one. So this next key, that was 2349. This next key is 2489. Okay. 
Okay. Now comes our new string. One of them. <laughs> it's, it's way off. So we, 2489 is what we want. And it's probably gonna loosen a little bit. Okay, that's that one. So now if I pull this up, I should get 24.89 on all three. I bet you that last one loosened up a little. Let's take a look. Let's take a look at it. Yeah, it did. It's a new string. Kind of wound it a little tight and let's see if. Let's look at this again. Look at these. Dampen these front and back strings. Yeah, that, that one's not all the way in. Man, come on. Doesn't take a lot with these high strings. Twenty-four eighty-nine. Sound now. Still low. So let's uh, let's dampen that first and last one. Try this again. Move to the middle one. How are we looking now? Still low. But that last string might have loosened up a little. Our new string. Yeah, it's loosened up a lot. Okay, that's much better. Now we got this other one, so we dampen that one, and this we're probably gonna have to do the the last key and this key again because this is the same string. So this should be twenty six thirty seven, our frequency. So let's put this on here. This is our new string. Yeah, it's off pretty much.
you know what? I'm on the wrong string. Well, I'm going to tune that one anyhow. Six thirty-seven. Okay, let's dampen front and back. Twenty-six thirty-seven. Dampen front and back. Whoops. Actually, it's not bad. 26.37. So let's see what this other one. 24.85. What was my last one? 24.89. That dropped a little. So that's it, replacing the string. Make sure I don't have any excess string sticking out, which I don't. It's wound three times here, two and a half times there. All the other ones are around three, so I think we'll be all right. Not the, you know, not the piano expert, but uh, that's pretty much how you replace a uh, line or a, a wire or a string in a piano. Hello, and welcome back. I'm sure you enjoyed your time with John, as he showed you all the technical intricacies of the piano. I'll turn this off. You see, now, fully tuned, and all the electronics installed, I'll show you how it fixes me. How about, how about some, uh, as time goes by, with a push of a button?
Like if you like.